Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, we are gonna do a book review. Uh, I haven't actually got the book to hand, so I will put an image up somewhere on the screen now. Uh, we are gonna be reviewing What is Poetry by Michael Rosen. Now this was a book that I was really happy to, to find out exists because I was watching, uh, I don't know how I got to his channel, it was, possibly just through the, the mystery of the YouTube homepage and um, its incredible fatalism in a sense. Um, and I got to his channel anyways, his YouTube channel, and I started watching a fair few of his videos because of course he does some similar poetry to, to some of the stuff I've done in the past. Um, obviously, I do a variety of poetry. I don't just do, let's say... Um, one genre really. I kind of, uh, I'm all over the place. I'm very haphazard. I do a bit of, you know, romanticism, a bit of prose, a bit of sort of children's story based poetry, which is what Michael does. And uh, I've, I've done haiku and, and different bit. I've just tried my hand at different things. Um, but it was very, very nice to find another person who is very much interested in that kind of nonsense poetry and stuff like that. And, and things that both can be geared towards, ch towards children, but also can be geared towards a, a general audience as well. I mean, a lot of the time, children's poetry, uh, we think of it as being for children, but that's not really the case. It's actually very very broad and it allows adults to go back to childhood to relive certain themes of their childhood certain ideas for example like um going to the grandma's house on a friday or a sunday or, or whatever or, or going out to the park with the parents or the grandparents or the friends or something like that so it allows for um a lot of nostalgia to be bred and that means that, that obviously when adults read it, it can be a fantastic experience as well. Um, but I really enjoyed this book. So as I say, I'll put a thing up either side. You'll probably seen it already, but I might pop it up again uh, for a few seconds. And uh, it's a book that it does what it says on the tin, really. It's about poetry. It, it is what is poetry. Um, but it comes from an angle of... Um, kind of directed at a child audience, but also at a sort of teacher slash guardian audience or parent slash guardian audience, um, which is quite nice. And it kind of just about strikes that balance in that very ambiguous area between writing for children and writing for adults. And it does get it just about right. Um, it's, it is slightly childish at times, but then it brings it back and it becomes, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say adult, but it brings it back so it feels as if um, it's not too childish in the way it's written. So someone, an adult, a teacher, a parent could read it and it would be quite a nice read. Um, but also a child could read it and it'd be perfectly suited to a child as well. It really is written in that way. Um, so the main thing of the book that I found, obviously the first part of the book was, was looking at what is poetry and how do we determine what a poem actually is, what the definition of a poem actually is. Now, that's a contentious topic because it's a contentious question and it, it's a contentious question in the sense that poetry is art and art is very hard to be defined. So because art is very hard to be defined and poetry is a is kind of a, um, a sub part of art, let's say, um, that means obviously poetry is hard to be defined. And he first off uh, states something that quite a lot of people like to state these days. And this is probably an overcompensation from the fact that in the 17th century, 18th century, 19th century, even 20th century, there was a lot of emphasis on poetry as 
rhyming and poetry was something that that has to rhyme basically um and you know so many great poets did that christina rossetti emily dickinson um walt whitman did a bit of rhyming i believe but there was also bits that that didn't necessarily rhyme um there were like lord byron uh I don't know about Percy Shelley. I've not read much of his stuff, so I'd have to look at that, but I think he did a bit. Um, obviously, people like William Wordsworth, William Blake, that sort of stuff. Of course, other um, poets like Dr. Zeus and Edward Lear and nonsense poetry. And so, so there was a lot. There's always been in the history of poetry a lot of that sort of stuff, a lot of uh, rhythmic verse. Um, and these days in the 21st century, we've had in poetry a a real shift and and maybe some of this comes along with social media i'm not sure there seems to be in one domain a shift towards um kind of prose and shorter poetry um but certainly on this kind of angle of, of no rhyming there's no rhyme it's just prose and it's generally shorter um and you see a lot of the instagram poets and this will be because instagram obviously you can only really do short poems on there if you're going to post one on your story can only really be about 12 15 maybe 20 lines unless you're going to do multiple stories or if you're going to do it on your grid or something like that unless you're going to flick through different photos you can only really do it so that then you've got a few lines of, of poetry whether that's a good thing or a restrictive thing, well, that's up to, up for debate. But, um, you know, for me personally, I'm not an Instagram poet. I don't generally do as much prose as I do um, rhyming stuff, although I do I do, do more prose now than I, I once did. Um, I kind of am quite traditional in my poetry, and in a way, I'm kind of antithetical to the zeitgeist of the time with regards to to poetry um and in that way i quite like it because i kind of feel as if as if i'm uh being a little bit rebellious with my poetry even though i'm not because i'm doing something that has been done for hundreds of years but yet because the the times are changing what was once very very usual is now a little bit more unusual not completely unusual but a little bit more unusual um uh, but what he does in that in those uh well i say opening pages but really it's for quite a good part of the book what he does is highlight various different ideas of uh what poetry can be and he looks at various different poems and maybe i think he even looks at him and things like that and he says well this is what poetry can have attributed to it this is what uh the the different um expressions of poetry can be and it can still be poetry even if we're looking at different things um and he gives quite a broad definition of what poetry can be now that is good and bad because of course you can say it's good because it opens up the idea of uh, what we can consider as art and what we can consider as, as being, you know, truly artistic and, and, and good poetry. But it also does, it can be bad because if you open up such a broad definition of any art form, or, you know, any sort of uh, sub-branch of art, then you can get into the point or into the folly of um the kind of degeneration of that art because you're let's say you're accepting so many different things as being uh within that framework within that structure um but i don't think he is unaware of that and uh although maybe that's not touched upon in the book so much um he certainly isn't defining what good poetry is versus what bad poetry is he's simply stating um in the book what poetry can be or could be uh, and therefore he doesn't get into the um sticky area of that argument too much which is quite good because if you were to do that you'd have to kind of tread quite lightly and make sure that 
uh, you're, you're covering your bases so that then you can actually define uh, poetry or what good poetry is, what bad poetry is in a way that is accepting and is somewhat broad but that is also limiting as well and it's very, it's very, very difficult, it's very, very difficult. But then he goes into, um, in fact I don't know exactly what he goes into next but he tends to go through different uh, kind of ideas of poetry, how to create a poem, this is something that he explores, he, he goes into techniques of how to create a poem and things like that, ideas on how to use the imagination, on um, you know how to explore the environment for uh, you know stimulation for your poetry, for inspiration I should say, and uh, that's a, another part of the book which is a section later. Um, and I really enjoyed that actually, I found that quite interesting and he normally does sort of these little headings, so I'll do a little subheading you know, imagination or something or daydreaming and then he'll talk about that in the way of exploring poetry and how um, uh, and how that can be used for, for actually a tool for creating poetry and things like that he does briefly talk about dreams which I was surprised about uh, it's only a short section, half a page or a page or something, but uh, it was nice to see that he'd, he'd uh, considered dreams as well as a part of poetic inspiration. I think that dreams are totally underutilised in poetry, of course. There have been poems in the past um, that have explored dreams. There's a poem from Edgar Allan Poe that explores dreams, uh, you know, themes of a dream. There is... Um, kind of writings from Shakespeare that touch upon dreams and there are there is a poem from uh, well there's a poem that indirectly touches upon it from Walt Whitman um, and you know just little lines here and there I'm not talking these things as you know uh, full poems that really outline dreaming or anything like that um, but there are lines here and there there is a poem from uh, the creator of Alice in Wonderland, is it Lewis Carroll? Lewis Carroll, um, that again, it indirectly touches upon dreaming and stuff, and it calls upon dreaming for a little bit of inspiration. In fact, Alice in Wonderland, which does have poems within that book, um, actually uh, is based upon, you know, Alice's dream of Wonderland. And uh, so, so there you go. So that's a little bit of, of dreaming coming into poetic inspiration and even, you know, fantasy writing and stuff, but, I mean, I think it is more so included in screenplays, you know, the the whole dreaming phenomena is included in screenplays, in movies, um, and in fantasy novels, more than it is in single poems, and I do feel like there's a lot of inspiration that can be drawn from dreams, from actually literally use it, like having a dream, writing it down, and then using that dream or fragments of that dream, along with fragments of other dreams, to create some spontaneous rhythmic poetry that really has quite some depth and some rhythm to it. And um, I, uh, I've done that myself numerous times, and. Uh, it is an un I wouldn't not unexplored but underexplored territory. So that was nice that he at least at least touched upon that. Um, he also touches upon uh, maybe the next chapter uh, or included in that chapter um, about some of his own uh, thoughts and feelings when he was creating certain poems, and that was quite interesting to see how uh, what he was thinking was. Uh, kind of influence in his poetry and things like that. And there was, there was some really insightful lines in the book, actually. Uh, sometimes it would get quite basic, because as I say, it's it's kind of written for children, but it's, you know, the, the adults can read it and can gain uh, some good information from it, some good ideas and stuff. But some, some parts of the book were a little bit basic, at least for me personally. Perhaps I was expecting something slightly different. Um, but then what would happen is certain lines, certain paragraphs would be quite... If you read between the lines, there was quite a lot of depth within them. Um, and then I really started thinking about, wow, that's that's a very interesting point. So... Um, uh, 
there was really interesting points about how the world around us influence you know all these different things all these experiences and stuff that we have influence the creation of a single poem and and really form its expression and really form the the character and, and, and the structure of the poem and that was really interesting you, you went into a little bit of depth on some of those themes and, and i quite liked that that was a little bit later on in the book um and yeah so i really really enjoyed it i thought it was really uh interesting at times and the one thing to commend about this book is that it is packed full of ideas. Uh, in, it is exactly like he is a child in the sense that, uh, not in a childish way, but in another phrase that is uh, m a much better phrase, in a childlike manner. Not a childish manner, but a childlike manner. And what I mean by that is he is allowing his imagination to go back to being a child and he's coming up with all these very creative um, and, and numerous ideas, uh, innumerable ideas, in fact, that only a child could sort of create. And he's writing these down in the book in a very innocent and authentic manner. Um, and, and it makes you think, wow, you know, how many of these ideas he's having just about different ways of creating poetry. And so it was very, very interesting. And... Um, I found that, uh, you know, I did find that absolutely remarkable, really. With, with, I mean, some of these ideas were pretty basic ideas, but just the creativity and the, the amount of them that, that were coming up. That, I mean, on every page, he was writing like five, six ideas down or more of how to do things and how to do it this way, how to do it that, how to do it the other, how to do it. And he was just constantly spurting out new ideas. And it was... It was quite something to read, it really was. Um, now, the other good thing, of course, is because of the way in which the book's written, it's um, it's, not, it's a nice, easy read. It's, you're not taxing yourself. There's no incredibly long words or anything like that. There's nothing to hit you hard and to think, wow, you know, I really need to digest that. It's not like I've got... Spinoza's book here, The Ethics. It's not like reading that or anything like that. It's not like reading Jung or Nietzsche or anything. It's just nice, easy reading. And that can be so valuable when a lot of the time, like myself, uh, you're exploring very intricate and very complex concepts. Sometimes your brain needs that rest. And when you've read a hard book, it's sometimes nice to read an easy book. And this book, you, you could read, I didn't read it in a day, but you could easily read it in a day if you wanted to. You could just sit down and you'd get through it very, very quickly. It's 190 pages or something, but it's that easy reading that you can easily just get through it, honestly, page after page. Um, there are another one thing to mention. I, I know this is quite a comprehensive review, actually, of this book, which I'm surprised about because I've not got it with me. I've not got it to hand. Um, but I do generally have a fairly decent memory anyway, and uh, I've, I've learned a lot about memory in my course, so I know the pitfalls of memory and how sometimes it can go wrong and stuff. So I do kind of exercise sometimes, not necessarily in this video, but sometimes I exercise... Uh, a, a trying to recall things in better detail knowing that certain things about the memory are very very fallible and are influenced by various different things that mean you recall things in a different way than they actually were um, but you can if you keep training your memory and stuff you can get it to a little bit better of a you know a little bit more of an accurate degree but that basically takes constant recall of memories so things that you've done maybe you know interesting things like flashbulb memories and stuff like that um interesting things like that if you constantly recall them go over them especially if they're recent things as well do that start with recent things recall them and 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 look at the detail of them and, and the the recall the movements of people in in the environment when you were in that environment and and do that a little bit and then it trains it but also with me uh, as with like dream interpreters and stuff because i do so many dreams i'm always challenged to remember things you know remember environments remember 
um, things that people said in dreams, things that how people acted in dreams. So I always have to try and very deeply and frustratingly remember these very, very complex scenes in dreams. Um, so I'm lucky in that sense that, that I can remember it. Um, but yeah, the other thing that I just wanted to mention to finish off was this book includes um, uh, different poems as well from different people. Um, there's the Jumblies in there from Edward Lear. Uh, there's Lewis Carroll, um, what is it, Doth the Little Crocodile or something something like that. Um, and there's, there's other ones as well. And, and there's some nice ones in there. There's some poems I, I wasn't aware of in there because... I don't necessarily, I, I mean, I've read poetry, but I've not read, you know, I've not read poetry. I've not gone into it in great depth or anything. I've just read bits and bobs from certain poets kind of thing, you know, like uh, a few from Christina Rossetti, a few from um, Dr. Zeus, although maybe a few more from Dr. Zeus because of childhood and stuff, uh, a few from Edward Lear, um, and then a few from, as I say, other poets and stuff. So I've read bits, but I've not read like extensively, not gone into crazy depth with all these different poets throughout history. Um, I do want to actually uh, read a little bit of Novalis as well, the kind of uh, German romantic poet. I think I may have read one or two of his, that's about it, but... Um, I feel, for some reason, I feel a little bit of an affinity towards him, and I, I don't know why, because I've not really read into his life or anything, but there's just a bit of intuition there that makes me feel that there might be some some level of affinity there. Um, but yeah, so uh, uh, that I think that does it for this video. I don't think I need to explain any more. Uh, we're at 21 minutes, and that's plenty long enough for a book review, uh, more than enough, really. And uh, when I read another book, which I'm currently reading one at the moment on my bedside table down there, I uh, will do a review on it because it's quite an interesting book. It's a little bit di well, very different from this book, and it's uh, quite different from the book I reviewed uh, uh, as well on Nietzsche. So um, it'll be a nice little refreshing one. Um, and yeah, when I've finished it, I will review it. Um, and I think I have some interesting things to say on it um, especially because some of it relates to another book I've read as well so I might uh, mention that in the review uh, but yeah I will leave it there I will see you for the next one I'm going to record an episode of 10 minute tea perhaps tomorrow if not tomorrow then uh, what day is it tomorrow Saturday if not tomorrow then I'll record it Sunday um, and yeah, if you've got any comments, questions or queries, write them down below. Also, don't forget, I will put the link to the book, What is Poetry by Michael Rosen, down below in the description. And I will leave it there. So thank you very much for watching, guys. See you very soon. Mm -hmm.